and today we are going to do one example on blend stress analysis. So plane stress is for structures like this one. And when we have a, a blank sheet like this, this is the thickness. So if we say, for example, that this is my coordinate x, this is my coordinate y, so it means that the thickness direction is going to be my z direction, and then if we consider a very small element in this blank sheet, for example like this one here, If we zoom in this element, so this is the thickness direction. So our shear planes are these ones here. So this this is going to be our y axis. This is going to be our x axis. So this shear plane in red, the normal vector, is a normal vector that has the same direction as my, my y-axis. And so, for that reason, we will have in this shear plane, or maybe I can write in a different color, we will have in the shear plane a uh, a direct stress or a normal stress that is going to be sigma y y also we will have a shear stress that is going to be tau y x so, as you know, the first subscript, the first subscript, so this one for direct stress and this one for the shear stress, they, rep it represents the orientation of the normal vector. So, in this case, the normal vector this normal vector is coincident with my y axis so that's why the first subscript in the stress components this one and this is y the second subscript this one in the direct stress and this one in the shear stress gives me the orientation or the direction of the stress component. For example, in this case, for the direct stress, my stress component has the same direction as my y-axis, so that's why my second subscript is y. For the shear stress, for this shear stress here, this vector has the same direction as my x-axis, and that's why my second subscript is x. If we consider now the shear plane perpendicular to my x-axis, shear plane here 
we will have the normal vector. Now, with same direction as x, and so the, the stress components that we will have here we will have a direct or normal stress sigma xx and we will have a shear stress in the shear plane so this one here and this shear stress is going to be my tau xy again same thing for subscripts first subscript this one and this one means that the normal vector this is coincident with my x axis the second subscript this one for the direct stress and this one for shear stress means if we consider the direct stress first the vector, the stress vector, has the same direction as x, so that's why the second subscript is x. For shear stress now, this vector here, so this vector has the same direction as y, so that's why the second subscript is y. It is important to point out that usually in plane stress analysis we um, we don't represent this plane stress element in 3D, we represent it in a, in two dimensions. So what I, I what I'm trying to say is that we usually represent this element in two dimensions like this. So this will be our x-axis, this will be our y-axis, and so our shear planes will be these edges. This one for the shear plane perpendicular to x, and this one, this edge, for the shear plane perpendicular to y. Uh, and so we will then have these stress components sigma xx which is the same as this one sigma yy and the shear stress is going to be so this is tau xy this is tau yx this is tau xy as well and this is tau yx and this is what we call our positive positive convention for the stresses this is I don't like this let me just oops okay let's see so this is tau x y this is tau y x um, and uh, tau xy is equal to tau yx. This comes from the Kirin equation for the moments. So it is always good to keep this to keep this plane stress element and this positive convention um, uh, keep 
this in mind because we will have to use this for the solution for stress transformation, for example, principal stresses, principal directions. So it's very important to follow this positive convention. Um, so how do we draw the positive stresses? So it's very easy. For example, if we if we start with this shear plane here, okay. So the normal vector to this shear plane is this one, right? N, okay? Is the same direction as x. And so the positive direct stresses is tension. So normal stresses or direct stresses, they are positive when they are in tension. So this is our sigma xx. Same thing for the shear plane perpendicular to y, which is this and this, right? Positive normal stresses must produce tension, so these are my positive normal stresses. What about the shear stresses? So let me start with this shear plane here in red, again perpendicular to x. So the positive shear stress, in order to plot or to draw the positive shear stress, we need to look at the direct stress in that plane. Okay, to this one. So. If the direct stress in that plane has the same direction as the x-axis in this case, so that means that the shear stress in the same plane, so this shear stress here, needs to have the same direction as y-axis. Okay. So in order to be positive, the shear stress in this shear plane needs also to have the same direction as the y-axis and this will be my tau x y let's look now at this shear plane here whose normal vector is also uh, vector x or coordinate x coordinate axis x if we look at the direct stress, this one, at this shear plane, this direct stress has, is, is opposite with x-axis. So that means that the shear stress in this shear plane needs also to be opposite with my y-axis. So my shear stress needs to be something like this, and this will be my tau x, y, as well. So we can do a little bit faster now for the shear planes perpendicular to y, so these two, this one, and this one. So starting, starting with this normal stress in that shear plane, as the same as the same positive direction as y, so it means my shear stress needs to have the same positive direction of my x-axis. This will be my tau y x. If we look now at this shear plane, the normal stress there is opposite with my y-axis. These two vectors, they have opposite directions. So this means my shear stress in that plane needs also to be opposite to my x-axis. So this will be my tau yx. And this is my positive convention. That's how we plot uh, or how we draw 
the positive stress components in plane stress analysis. So these are so stresses. This this stress components with these orientations, they are positive stresses. Okay, so there are some things that I forgot to to tell you. Uh, so let's go back. So plane stress. So this kind of um, structures, this kind of. Uh, thin walled structures. So we have plane stress when the the dimensions in the in plane dimensions if you, you want to call it this way. So the dimensions in the X and Y direction are much much bigger than the dimensions in the thickness direction or in the Z direction. So basically whenever we have a thin walled structure when the in-plane dimensions are uh, much bigger than the thickness the thickness of the, the structure we can say that we we are in plane stress analysis and so in that case we have only we have only the the stress components the in-plane stress components sigma xx sigma y y and top x y these are our non zero stress components um, so it means that the stress components in the thickness direction Z Z top Z X top Z Y they are they can be considered very close to zero and this approximation to zero is uh, even better when the thickness of the, the structure becomes very 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 small um, so as you can see, these are the, the stress these are the stress components in the thickness direction, and you can easily see that because the first subscript, the first subscript, don't forget, is always the normal to the shear plane, and in this case that normal is my z direction. So this will give me the components in the thickness direction. Alright, so let's do an example now. Uh, so imagine I give you these uh, uh, plane stress components. So you have this, these two shear planes, so basically this one and this one. Okay, these two shear planes. Let's say this is my my orientation, my direction A, and this is my direction B. Okay. Um, we will have here my horizontal x direction. Uh, and my vertical y direction let's say that this angle here is 30 degrees and I give you this stress component so let's say I give you sigma a a so this is sigma a a let's say is for example 100 megapascal i 
I give you Sigma BB, I'm going to say Sigma BB, this one, um, minus 200 megapascal. So Sigma BB is a compressive stress, it's compressing the this element and I'm going to give you a shear stress that is going to be negative so it means I have to reverse the orientations of the shear stresses in my positive convention so these are my positive shear stresses right? stresses in these shear planes in order to be shear stresses in these shear planes in order to be positive they need to have these orientations so if I'm giving you a negative shear stress it means you need to reverse all these orientations for the shear stresses in fact we did the same for the compressive stress sigma BB Right. So I, I'm just I'm just going to to draw here again the the positive convention for stress. So if this is x, y, sigma x x, sigma y y. tau x y for shear stress so this is the positive convention so as you can see sigma bb sigma bb minus 200 megapascal so basically this uh, needs to be this normal stress needs to be a compressive stress so it's opposite with this normal stress in my positive convention same thing for shear stresses as you can see for example if you look at this shear stress this is my positive shear stress if you look at the corresponding one in our example is opposite to my positive convention because I'm saying that my shear stress that I will call sorry tau AB is going to be minus 100 megapascal as well. So as you can see, for all other, in for the shear stresses in the other shear planes, I reverse them all, right? So same for this. This is the positive. Here is reverse. In this shear plane, this is the positive orientation. Here I reversed. This is the positive orientation. I did reverse the orientation in our example in this, in the same shear plane or in the corresponding shear plane. Okay. So. All right. So, so what is the question? So let's say let's do a part A. The question is, obtain the direct stress in a shear plane perpendicular to X Obtain the direct stress in a shear plane perpendicular to my Y axis And obtain the shear stress tau X Y so basically we will have to do a stress transformation here um, to transform the stress the stresses from the coordinate system AB to the coordinate system XY. So we are going to do this in two different ways. One is using the uh, stress transformation. I'm going to write here stress transformation. for 
explain stress analysis. So this, let's say, this is the first way I. The second, uh, second way of solving this is by using the Morse circle. Of course, we need to get exactly the same results for sigma xx, sigma yy, and tau xy. Before we continue our analysis, um, let's just uh, uh, represent these uh, these values for the stresses in a different way because. And for example, if we look at uh, the normal stress sigma BB minus 200 megapascal, so the fact that the stress is negative means it is a compressive stress. So we represented already the compressive stress by this orientation for this uh, normal vector. So this means that we should not represent. Uh, the stress minus 200 megapascal but just say that this is going to be 200 megapascal or if you want we just put now here the absolute value of the stress because the the signal is already expressed in the orientation of the normal vector of the normal stress vector we have to do the same for shear stress so this shear stress we are going to say that it is 100 megapascal so the absolute value of this shear stress uh, right so we can also say that this is sigma AA is 100 megapascal this way Okay, so let's start with our uh, start from using the um, stress transformation, the equations for stress transformation. Um, I'm just going to to copy the equations here. So for the normal stress, we have this equation for stress transformation you can check in your textbook in blackboard how, how we obtain this equation for the direct stress For shear stress, the equation is this one. Of course, this this applies to a coordinate system x y and of course for these stress components. Um, another important thing is, so basically, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to, to 
it's better to do another drawing here. So we have this coordinate system x, y. Um, and for example, if I look at this shear plane here now, this shear plane, uh, I want to obtain what? I want to obtain I want to obtain the direct stress sigma, so it's this one, in this shear plane, and I want to obtain the shear stress tau. For some reason, Pencil in the iPad Pro is not working properly, so let's try again. Mm. So this shear stress here, um, and um, This angle theta that you see here, this angle theta that you see in these equations, these stress transformation equations here, this angle theta is the angle measured from the x or from the horizontal axis. So let's say this is my a direction. So this will be my angle theta. Of course, I can I can always um, see this in a different way. Uh, I can say, for example, let me try to. Okay, so if this is my direction A, this is my direction B. If I know my, so this is B, if I know my sigma AA, this normal stress, right? If I know my sigma BB, if I have my shear stress tau AB, Can always, I can also say that I can obtain um, the stress transformation, the, the equations for stress transformation from AB to XY uh, by saying that the normal stress sigma is going to be equal to sigma AA plus sigma BB over 2 plus sigma x, sorry, sigma a a minus sigma b b over 2 cosine 2 theta plus tau a b sine 2 theta and for shear stress we will have sigma AA minus sigma BB over 2 sine of 2 theta plus tau AB cosine of 2 theta. 
and in this case my theta angle is measured from my direction A so for example if I want so I always start from A in this case so for example if I want to obtain sigma xx I will have to rotate from A by a negative angle theta okay so let's start our analysis then so we can obtain uh, sigma xx by just uh, using this equation here now and um, after replacing this angle theta by minus 30 degrees Okay, so sigma AA is 100 megapascal. Sigma BB is minus 200 megapascal. Now sigma AA, 100 megapascal, minus sigma BB, so minus with minus will be plus, cosine minus 60 degrees, and the shear stress is minus 100 megapascal. So this gives sigma x x one hundred and eleven point six megapascal. We can now um, calculate sigma y y. So for sigma y y, as you can see here. we need to, the angle we need to use is this one and this angle is going to be uh, 60 degrees so basically it's 90 minus 30 so we have again over 2 so sigma a and sigma bb they are the same the only thing that is changing is now sorry so we need to, to use 2 times 60 so this makes 120 degrees Tau AB is also minus 100 megapascal. Sine of 120 degrees. So this gives sigma YY equal to minus 211.6 megapascal. We go now for shear stress, tau xy, so this is going to be equal to minus sigma aa, which is 100 megapascal, 
minus sigma bb, so it, it will be here 200 or 2. sine of minus 60 degrees plus tau x to plus tau ab but tau ab is minus 100 megapascal cosine minus 60 degrees and this gives tau x y equal to 79.9 megapascal we can solve this in a different way so what we are going to do now is we are going to uh, start from the st stress tensor described in the x y coordinate system so sigma x x sigma y y tau x y and we are going to use basically these stress transformation equations to obtain the stress tensor in the a b coordinate system so sigma a a sigma b b and tau a b okay so we can we can then say that sigma AA is going to be equal to sigma XX plus sigma YY over 2 plus sigma XX minus sigma YY over 2 cosine Now the angle, if you look, if you look at this, so if we start, so, so the angle in this case is going to be measured from my x coordinate axis. So in order to find my direction a, where we have sigma a a, I need to rotate anti-clockwise 30 degrees. So this is the angle that I am going to use. So 2 times 30 degrees. So this will be cosine of 60 degrees plus tau xy sine of, again, 60 degrees. And we know that this sigma AA, sigma AA is 100 megapascal. So this needs to be equal to 100. Now, I'm going to use this same equation, stress transformation equation, to obtain for the direct stress in the shear plane perpendicular to my B direction, sigma BB. So the stress transformation equation is the same. I just need to use a different angle and the angle we have to use is this angle here from here to here. And this angle is 90 plus 30 so this angle is 120 degrees so we can say sigma bb is going to be equal Again, sigma xx plus sigma yy over 2 plus 
sigma x x minus sigma y y over 2 cosine of 2 times 120 or cosine of 240 degrees plus tau x y sine 240 degrees and we know that sigma bb is equal to minus 200 Just delete this. Okay. So now for the for the shear stress tau AB. We are going to use this equation that will give us the shear stress. Okay, so we can then say that tau AB is going to be equal to minus sigma x x minus sigma y y over 2 sine of 60 degrees plus tau x y cosine of 60 degrees and this shear stress tau a b as you can see here Sorry. Tau AB is minus 100 megapascal. Okay, so as you can see from this from these three equations, we have three equations for three unknowns. Sigma x x, sigma y y, and tau x y. So, three equations for three unknowns. We should solve these three equations and then we should be able to get sigma x x, sigma y y tau x y we just solve this linear systems of equation system of equations that's what I'm going to do now so this gives after solving this system of three equations we obtain sigma x x one hundred and eleven point six megapascal sigma y y minus 211.6 megapascal and tau xy equal to 79.9 megapascal which is exactly the same results we obtained from the previous solution Okay, so let's now solve the same problem uh, using the Mohr circle. Um, I'm just going to copy the 
copy this figure here, which is essential to draw the Mars circle. So this is direction A, direction B, we have here sigma AA tensile 100 megapascal, we have sigma BB compressive stress and 200 megapascal, and we have the shear stress tau AB. which is minus 100 megapascal, but the minus is already included in the orientation of the shear stresses, so we just put 100 megapascal. So let's see how can we, uh, now from this, from this plane stress tensor in the AB coordinate system, how can we plot the Mohr circle. So the what we have to do is so basically we have two shear planes in this in this figure. We have this one perpendicular to X and we have this one sorry not perpendicular to X so sorry. We have this one perpendicular to A and we have this other shear plane perpendicular to B. So what we have to do is we need to start with one of these two, anyone is fine. So let's say, let's consider the shear plane perpendicular to direction A. So what I'm saying is that this is my direction A. So in this shear plane, I have 100 megapascal here, and I have this shear component, which is also 100 megapascal. Right, right. So, and for the more circle, what? we need to do is we need to have an horizontal axis which is the axis of the direct stress sigma and we need to have a vertical axis which is the axis of the shear stresses tau and then what we do so for this shear plane perpendicular to A, we have a direct stress which is 100 megapascal. So let's say, for example, this is 100 megapascal here. And we have a shear stress. We have this shear stress. Uh, Sorry, let me go back. So this is my 100. And we have this shear stress here. This one. If that will produce a, a clockwise rotation about the center of this uh, square element. Right? So imagine like if this shear stress is a force, um, so if we do the force times this distance, we will have a moment and that moment will be clockwise. So if we have a clockwise, if we have a clockwise moment produced by a shear stress, we need to plot the shear stress in the positive 
12 axes and the more circles. So this will be 100 here. And so we can say that this point, this point here will be my point A with a direct stress of 100 and the shear stress of 100. And this point A, this point A here corresponds to this shear plane. So a point in the Mohr circle corresponds to a shear plane. As you can see in this shear plane, we also have a direct stress 100 and a shear stress of 100. So exactly what we have in this point A in the Mohr circle. Okay. So we have now to plot the other point that we have. The other point that we have is the, the one that corresponds to the shear plane perpendicular to B. So, and for that, I'm just going to delete this one now. So, this is going to be my direction B now. This is the, the shear plane that we are going to consider now, perpendicular to B. And in these shear planes, we have a compressive direct stress of 200 megapascal. And shear stresses with this orientation. So you can just look at what, it, what you have here in this picture. It's exactly what I am including here in this auxiliary picture. And this shear stress, of course, is 100 megapascal. So, if we start with um, the direct stress, we have a negative direct stress because this is a compressive direct stress. So I need to say, so this is minus 100, minus 200. And now, if you look at the, these two shear stresses, they produce now an anti-clockwise moment about the center of this element and so we need to plot in the negative tau axis in the Mohr circle so we will have here oh sorry so this will be 100 as well right and so this point this point here I will call it my point B because this point corresponds to this shear plane perpendicular to my B direction so again a point in the Mohr circle corresponds to a shear plane as you can see this point has direct stress minus 200 shear stress of 100 and that is exactly what you have in this shear plane okay so now that we have two points we can just connect these two points with a line the intersection of these two points with the horizontal axis is the center of the circle and now we just 
draw our circle passing on point A and B and with center at point C. I think maybe I can draw a better circle. Not worst. So. Okay. All right. There are some uh, very important information we can uh, take from the Mohr circle, some particular points in the circle. Um, for example, this point here and this point here, they are they have only uh, direct stress, Rao, so for these two points the shear stress is equal to zero and uh, for that reason we say that this point corresponds to a principal shear plane. Principal shear plane is a shear plane where we have only direct stresses. Shear stresses are zero. And because this is the highest shear, uh, direct stress we can have, we call this point point sigma one, principal stress number one. This point here is also a principal plane because the shear stress in this plane is also equal to zero and then the direct stress that we have here we say is sigma 2 our second principal stress in plane stress analysis the sigma 3 is equal to zero and it is in the origin of the Mohr circle and so the principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the maximum direct stresses we can have in plane stress analysis. Another important point we can take from the Mohr circle is so if I just draw a line here and here, so this point and this point here corresponds to a shear plane where we will have the maximum shear stress that is that can be easily seen because if you look at several different points in the Mohr circle this one here is the one that will give you the maximum tau right it's also a very important point in the design of structures let's see now how can we obtain the the stress tensor or the stress components in the x y coordinate system by using the Mohr circle so I'm going to delete this the stress components here first thing we need to do is we need to find the so basically this this is the shear plane perpendicular to X this is the shear plane perpendicular to Y so we need to find the orientation of these two shear planes this one perpendicular to x and this one perpendicular to y. We need to find the points in the Mohr circle that correspond to these two shear planes that you see here in green. Uh, 
So, what we are going to do is, we are going to start with the shear plane perpendicular to x, this one here. And then, we are going to, to start from direction A. So, we are going to, okay, imagine that we, we are at direction A, something like this. And then, in order to find direction x, I need to rotate clockwise 30 degrees, right? If I do that, if I start from direction A, and if I rotate clockwise 30 degrees, I will find my direction x. So, I'm going to do exactly the same way in the Mohr circle. I'm going to start from my direction A. I'm going to rotate as well clockwise. I'm going to rotate clockwise. So we rotate also clockwise from point A. And then this angle here needs to be 2 times 30. So in the Mohr circle, we always represent two times the, the angle. And then this point here will be my point, sorry, will be my point X. And this point X will represent the shear plane perpendicular to my X direction. So basically this will be equal to 60 degrees, this angle. And then, after having this point, we know that this will be my sigma xx. This will be my tau xy. We can do in a similar way to to obtain now I'm going to to do it in blue color now. So if I want now to obtain the point in the Mohr circle that corresponds to the shear plane perpendicular to my y direction, this one in blue, starting again from point A, I will have to rotate anti-clockwise now and this angle here is 60 degrees and then if I do that I will find my y direction so what I did was I started from direction A again rotated anti-clockwise and then I found my direction y So I'm going to do the same way in the more circle. So I'm going to start from my direction A. I'm going to rotate anti-clockwise as well. And this angle here is going to be 2 times 60. And then I will find my direction Y. And then this will be my sigma yy, and this will be my tau xy. Um, as you can see, in the Mohr circle, the angle between x and y, this angle here, 
is 60 plus 120, so it is 180. This means that here the angle needs to be 180 over 2, 90 degrees, which of course is what is happening between x and y. The angle is 90 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to to draw again the more circle in this new new page uh, because it's getting a little bit complex there. So let's say this is my. is my point B. Center. Oh. And then we have point X and point Y. Right. And we know that this angle here is here to here is 60 degrees. What we can do now is we can calculate the radius of this circle and the location of the center. So the center maybe I can do it here. The center is always the midpoint between these two. So we have sigma BB minus 200, sigma AA 100. So the center is the midpoint between these two. So I can say that the center is sigma sigma AA plus sigma BB over 2 is going to be equal to 100 minus 200 over 2 equal to minus 50. For the radius, um, for example, we can look at, uh, we have this rectangular triangle here, okay? Um, so this will be my radius R this one the radius of the circle this distance from here to here is going to be 150 and this one is 100 right so I can use the Pythagoras theorem and say
and say that my radius square is going to be equal to 150 square plus 100 square this means that my radius is going to be equal to square root 150 square plus 100 square and this is equal to 180.3 approximately okay so um, I can just copy this here because we going to need so the center is minus 50 And the radius is 180.3 and now I can delete this I need some space all right now what we need to know more so I need to know I need to know this angle here Let's say this, let's call this angle angle alpha. If I know this angle, I can then say that sigma xx is going to be equal to the center of the circle. So basically, it means if I start from the origin from this point, I need to find the center so I need to go from here to here find the center and then I need to get this sorry not this so this is my sigma x x and then once I am I arrive at the center I need to go until I get this and this distance is the radius of the circle which is this right cosine of alpha so I can say the Sigma XX is going to be the center plus the radius cosine of alpha and let me let me just delete this because the drawing will be very complex okay so the center the sigma x x is going to be the center plus the radius cosine of alpha right sigma yy so if you look carefully this angle here is also alpha so sigma yy which is this Sigma y y is going to be so. If I start again in the origin, I need to go to the center, and then I from this point I need to come all the way to here. And this distance is again the radius cosine of alpha, right? So, sigma yy is going to be equal to the center minus the radius the cosine of alpha. Minus because I'm from this point, from this point, I am walking in the opposite direction of sigma, right? So, it needs to be, that's why it is minus here. I'm going to delete all of this now because then
Okay, so we can say that sigma y y is going to be equal to the center minus the radius cosine of alpha. The last thing we the last thing we we need to obtain is the shear stress tau x y. And again, if you look at this. rectangular triangle here we can say that this is going to be my tau xy and this is equal to the radius sine of alpha right so it's very very easy So I can say then, then my tau xy is going to be equal to my radius sine of alpha. The only thing we, so basically we have the center, we have the radius, right? We have this, this. The only thing we need to calculate is this angle alpha. And one way we can obtain this angle alpha is we can say that alpha if you look at this 60 degrees here I will say that alpha is equal to 60 minus beta where beta is this angle here Right? And we can obtain this beta again by uh, now looking at this rectangular triangle here. We can say from this rectangular triangle that beta I'm going to say here beta is tangent minus one the inverse of the tangent of one hundred, which is this height here over this distance, which is. 150 right so this gives beta equal to 33.7 degrees so we can say that alpha is going to be equal to 26.7 Three degrees. Okay, and so we can just now replace on these equations, and then we obtain. And probably I can. Okay, so we start with sigma x. So it's the center. Which is minus 50 plus the radius which is 180.3 cosine of 26.3 which is equal to Megapascal Sigma YY the delete Sigma YY is center minus fifty again minus one hundred and eighty point three cosine of twenty six point three degrees. 
degrees, which is equal to minus 211.6 megapascal and tau xy is going to be equal to um, the radius which is 180.3 sine of 26.3 degrees which is equal to 79.9 megapascal okay so let's see the results we obtained for uh, by just using the stress transformation equations from plane stress analysis so here they are we obtain sigma xx 111.6 megapascal correct we obtain exactly this with more circle sigma yy minus 211.6 we obtain exactly the same by using the Mohr circle and tau xy 79.9 megapascal check as well from the Mohr circle right so as you can see the great advantage of the Mohr circle is that basically we transform uh, uh, a stress problem into a geometric problem basically where the points in the circle corresponds to shear planes and we can get everything from the Mohr circle including uh, stress transformations principal stresses principal directions maximum shear stresses everything is in the Mohr circle and everything can be taken from geometry only uh, another advantage is that if we draw the circle with a scale we can just then measure and apply the scale factor and then we immediately obtain the stresses so it's very a very convenient tool uh, that uh, is used many times in uh, structural design so we are going to see uh, now in part B of this problem how can we obtain the principal stresses principal directions and the maximum shear stresses from the Mohr circle and from plane stress analysis basically okay so let's say now we have a part B where we want to obtain the principal directions and principal stresses okay so let's start with um, the plane stress equations so we are going to start our starting point is going to be this stress transformation equation for the direct stress I'm just going to write it down again And what we are going to do now is we are going to obtain the maximum and minimum values for the direct stresses so basically what we are going to say is that we are going to find the directions theta that will give us a shear plane and we want that in that shear plane we get the maximum the maximum direct stress I will show you that those shear planes they will also have shear stress equal to zero so the shear planes where we have the maximum direct stress they also have 
a zero shear stress and then we call those shear planes principal planes we call the orientation of the normal vector to those planes we call principal directions and the direct stress in that plane we call principal stress So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the maximum and minimum of this sigma stress, direct stress. So in order to do that, I need to do the derivative of my sigma function in order to angle theta. And then I need to say that derivative is equal to zero. This is what we usually do to obtain the maximum of a function. So if we do that way, we if we do the derivative, we get minus sigma x x minus sigma y y sine of two theta plus two tau x y cosine of two theta. So this is this is the derivative of this sigma function in order to theta and then we have to say that this derivative needs to be equal to zero so that we can obtain the maximum sigma so if we if we divide this equation by cosine of 2 theta so if I divide this by cosine of 2 theta this will be 1 this will be tangent of 2 theta right so if we do that way we will obtain this equation tangent of theta equal to 2 tau xy over sigma xx minus sigma yy and I'm going to call this angle theta theta p p from principal because the angle that we obtain from this equation the angle that we obtain from this equation is going to be my principal direction so that's why we have this subscript P. Now, from the definition of tangent, I can say if I draw here a rectangular triangle, something like this, if I say that this angle is 2 theta P, I can say that this is going to be 2 tau xy right this is going to be sigma x x minus sigma y y and then from the Pythagoras theorem the hypotenuse is going to be sigma x x minus sigma y y square plus 4 tau x y square So that I can say, for example, that sine of 2 theta p is going to be equal to 2 tau xy over the hypotenuse, right? And 
I can also say that cosine of 2 theta p is going to be equal to sigma xx minus sigma yy over again the hypotenuse And the reason why I'm, I'm doing this is because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace this sign here. I'm going to use this cosine and I'm going to replace it here. And if I do that, because I know that this theta p will give me a principal plane so if I replace this sine and cosine in these equations I know that what I will obtain here is going to be a principal stress is going to be sigma 1 or sigma 2 so that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm just going to replace these equations in in sigma in sine and cosine there and obtain the equations for the principal stresses. So I need to do that in a in a different page, create a new one. Just going to write here again the stress equation. Now I'm going to replace sine and cosine with the results from previous equations. So we obtain something like that, sigma equal to xx sigma yy over 2. Now replacing cosine we have now times And now uh, I think I need to I need to continue here. Now I'm going to replace sine of two theta, so we will have two tau xy over this. Right, I'm just replacing sine and cosine from previous equations, so um, okay. So we can we can simplify these equations a little bit because um, yeah I can say that so after some simplification this becomes sigma equal sigma xx plus sigma yy over 2 now we can just we can just say this is equal to this we'll have here is basically
and so this becomes something like this So this is the the equation that will give us the principal stresses because they are a consequence of replacing in the in the stress direct stress equation replacing the sine and cosine from the principal directions from these two equations that we obtained from the maximum and minimum values for the direct stress so everything is, is connected here so by doing the maximum and the minimum values for the direct stress we obtained principal direction this angle theta p and then after replacing this angle theta p in the direct stress equation we can then obtain the maximum direct stress uh, that we have and we call this maximum direct stress uh, a principal stress um, this principal stress sorry, this equation for the principal stress is also can also be written in a different way which is more common um, which is if I send this if I send this to inside the square root, that's what I'm going to do now. So you will have something like this, square root of sigma xx minus sigma yy over 2, everything square, plus tau xy square. This is a uh, more common equation for the principal stresses. Uh, another thing is, so we have two principal stresses so sigma 1 is going to be equal to sigma x x plus sigma y y over 2 plus this square root and sigma 2 is going to be sigma x x plus sigma y y over 2 minus this square root here these are the equations for the principal stresses in plane stress analysis and they represent these two principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 they represent the maximum direct stresses we can have in that point of our structure so let's apply these two equations to our our problem so we have let me just go back some slides um, we have sigma x 111.6 just going to write down here sigma x x 111.6 megapascal sigma y y minus 211.6 and tau xy is 79.9 megapascal All right so if we start with the principal directions so we need to to use this equation
So we have a shear stress which is 79.9, sigma x, x is 111.6, sigma y y is minus, so this becomes plus 6. So this means my angle T to P is going to be equal to 13.15 degrees. So we will have the principal directions are given from T to P equal to 13.15 degrees or T to P equal to 13.15 degrees plus 90 degrees or 103. So, this is because the tangent, the tangent equation, the tangent function, sorry. So if this angle is 2 T to P, so the tangent will be this, right? Uh, so if we have this angle now, 2 theta p plus 180 degrees, we will have exactly the same tangent, right? So that's why, that's why we have here the second solution for the principal direction because of the tangent here. Now for the principal stresses. So we have sigma 1, sorry, we have sigma 1 is going to be equal to sigma x x plus sigma y y over 2 so it is 111.6 sigma y y is minus 211.6 over 2 plus square root sigma y y which is 111.6 minus sigma so this is sigma xx, 111.6, minus sigma yy, which is minus 211.6, over 2, the square, plus the shear stress, the square of shear stress, so plus 79.9 square. So this gives sigma 1 equal to 130.3 megapascal and for sigma 2 we have same thing here but now we have minus the square root right and sigma 2 is minus 230.3 megapascal so let's uh, uh, let's do this again but now instead of using the stress tensor in the x and y coordinate system this one we are going to use the stress tensor in the a B coordinate system. So in that case we have sigma A A is 100 megapascal. Sigma B B is minus 200 megapascal. And tau AB is minus 100 megapascal. So this 
this is the stressed answer that was given in the question. So basically, we we will obtain the principal directions or this angle theta that will be different here. But the principal stresses sigma one and sigma two they need to be exactly the same as these two here. The reason is that these principal stresses they are unique. There are only this three principal stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, in plane stress, sigma 3 is equal to 0, but they are unique, there, is, there are only these three principal stresses, so if we use, if we use the stress tensor in a different coordinate system, we need to obtain exactly the same principal stresses, so let's see, let's, let's do the, the principal stresses and see if that is the case, so Sigma 1, sigma 1 is going to be equal to sigma A, A plus sigma B, B over 2 plus square root sigma A, A minus sigma B, B over 2 square plus tau A, B square. So if I replace, I have 100 minus 200 over 2 plus square root of 100 plus 200 over 2 square plus 100 square and this gives sigma 1 equal to 130.3 megapascal as before right as before so this check and sigma 2 needs to be equal to sigma AA plus sigma BB over 2 minus the square root sigma BB over 2 And then if we replace, we get 100 minus 200 over 2 minus square root of 100 plus 200 over 2 square plus 100 square. And this gives sigma 2 equal to minus 230.3 megapascal exactly as the sigma 2 we obtained before when we used the stress tensor in the x y z coordinate system okay so let's see how can we obtain the the principal uh, directions and principal stresses from the Mohr circle now. So let's go back some pages to the Mohr circle. Okay. Alright, so maybe let me see this. Yeah. Um, I think it might be better to draw again the more circle here. Okay, I'm just going to, to draw the more circle again. So we have we have the horizon. Horizontal axis is the direct stresses, vertical axis is the shear stresses, and we had before this 100, 100, so this is my point A, and then we have 
minus 100, minus 200 here, 100 here, and this was our point B, if you remember, right, point B, this one. So we connected this with a line, this was the center, and then this was our more circle, right? We also we also define our point X this one and our point Y this one and another thing that we also calculated before was this angles this angle beta and alpha that you see here right is beta and alpha these two um so alpha was 26.3 degrees right 26.3 i'm just going to so this angle is from here to here 26.3 degrees and beta beta was 33.7 right this beta here I'm going to write it there as well 33.7 and these angles uh, will give us will give us automatically the the orientation of the uh, the principal direction sorry so this is my this point is my principal stress sigma 1 this point is my principal stress sigma 2 right so look now that if we if I start from X so I'm aligning myself with the X direction. That's what I did here in the green color. So if I start from X, if I rotate anti-clockwise 26.3 degrees, I will find my principal direction sigma 1. Right? So this means that this 26.3 is going to be my 2 times theta 1, if you want to call it this way. 2 times because, as I told in the Mohr circle, the angle is always 2 times the real angle that, the, that we have in the plane stress, right? So... And this angle is the angle, so if, if, we have, if we have the x and y direction, if this is my x, this is my y direction, this angle theta 1 is the angle, so remember I, in the more circle I started from x, I rotated anti-clockwise and I found the principal direction 1, so I'm going to do it the same way here. I'm starting from X, I will rotate as well anti-clockwise, right? And I'm going to find, this is going to be my principal direction 1, and this angle, this angle I'm going to put here, this angle here, needs to be Half of 26.3 right because in the Mohr circle we always plot two times this angle here so this angle is going to be 13 point 15 degrees all right so 
I'm going to recap uh, how we did in the more circle. So we, I'm going to do now in blue. We position ourselves in the x direction. This one. So this is my. This will give me my, my x direction. And then in order to find my direction one, sigma one, this one here. I need to rotate anti-clockwise. And then I find my principal direction one. I know this angle from the more circular analysis we did before. So I do exactly the same way here. I have my x, I start from my x direction in blue now. I rotate anti-clockwise like I did in the more circle. And the angle I use is half of the angle that we have in the more circle. And then I will find my principal direction number one. And what I know is that this principal direction number one is a normal vector to a shear plane, this one. Oh, sorry. That is better. So this nor is perpendicular to this shear plane and I know that in this shear plane I will have I will have a direct stress this one in green which is sigma 1 only I only have a direct stress because this is a principal plane and this direct stress I can calculate from the Mohr circle I can say that sigma 1, if you look at more circle, is if I start, if I start in the origin of the more circle here, I need to walk until I find the center of the circle. And this is 50, so I need to go to the center, so minus 50, don't forget the center is here. here right the center is minus 50 and then from the center I need to go in the positive Sigma direction until I find my point Sigma 1 right and this distance here is equal to the radius of the circle if you agree with me. Right, so the radius of the circle we calculated before as well. The radius of the circle is 180.3. So I need to add here plus 180.3, and this will give me the sigma 1 equal to 130.3 megapascal and then I can say that this direct stress here is going to be 130.3 megapascal and as you can see this 130.3 megapascal for sigma 1 for my principal stress that we obtained from the Mohr circle is exactly same that we obtained from our plane stress analysis, right? This one here and this one here when we use the stress tensor in the XY coordinate system. Okay. Now for the principal direction two. Um, so what we can what we can basically do is uh, for the principal direction number two, um, we know that uh, principal direction number two is this one, right? So how can I obtain this direction? So if I start again from x, so this is my x, if I start again from x, I need to rotate 26.3 degrees plus 
180 degrees, right? So this angle from here to here, or if you want, the angle between direction 1 and direction 2 is 180 degrees in the Mars circle, right? So if it is 180 degrees in the Mars circle, it means it needs to be, so in this plot, it needs to be uh, half of 180 degrees. So this direction here, sorry, this is going to be my direction too, and this angle And this angle here, sorry, let me just delete this. Okay. And this angle between direction 1 and 2, this angle here, is going to be 90 degrees. Why? Because in the Mohr circle, direction 1, this one, and direction 2, this one, they make an angle of 180 degrees. So basically, direction 1 and direction 2, they are perpendicular, they are orthogonal. And this is always the case. The principal directions, they are orthogonal between each other. They are perpendicular to, it, to each other. So what we know now as well is that in this shear plane here, in this shear plane here that is perpendicular to my direction 2 right in this shear plane I will have I will have a direct stress only sorry Sigma 2 so it is, this is a principal plane as well, so the, sh the shear stress is zero, it corresponds to this point in the Mohr circle. And this sigma 2 can be obtained again from the Mohr circle. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going again to start from the origin, I'm going to the center, this point, so this is minus 50, is the center. and then. From this point, I need to go all the way until I find my sorry my direction two, my principal direction two, and this distance again is the radius of the circle. Okay, so I need to go so if. I'm going back in the opposite sigma direction. So means going back means I need to subtract or or take off the radius of the circle. Right? And so this will be minus 230.3 megapascal. So we can say that sigma 2 is going to be 230.3 megapascal. Uh, the signal is already included in the orientation of this, in the orientation of this stress vector, right? And as you can see, this is exactly the same value that we obtain for sigma 2 when we do a plane stress analysis. Uh, oh, another thing I think I didn't told you was when we were talking about this angle. Um, so, or if you want about this angle here, thirteen point fifteen principal direction one. 
uh, we didn't confirm if this is the same angle we obtained before when we used the plane stress transformations. Uh, we can check that now. So when we obtain the principal directions, we use this equation for the tangent, right, of 2 theta p, and we obtained theta p 13.15 degrees, which is exactly the same as this one here, right? So everything matches very well. Um, and uh, I just wanted to show you how to obtain the principal directions principal stresses by using the plane stress equations and also by using the Mohr circle. You need to be careful with the angle in the Mohr circle. The angle you represent in the Mohr circle is always two times the real angle. Um, yeah, and then don't forget that every single point in the circle corresponds to a shear plane. And then you just need to see the point if it has a sigma or tau coordinate. Um, if it has only sigma coordinate, like these two, means they are principal stresses. Uh, and then you can get the orientations from X, like we did in this example, or you can also get the orientation starting from A uh, by just starting from A, this, and rotate clockwise. In this case, you will find direction 1 something like this. Uh, the last thing I would like to do is uh, the, to show you how you can easily obtain the maximum shear stress. Uh, this one, maximum shear stress tau from the Mohr circle. So it is very easy we can do in this in this page because um, the, the maximum shear stress, so if you start the center, you just draw a vertical line. This point here is the point where you will have a maximum shear stress, and which is very easy to calculate because this is equal to the radius of the circle, and the radius of the circle in our case is 180.3 megapascal, right? So the maximum shear stress from the Mohr circle is, you can see, is, is, is really very easy to, to, to calculate and it is equal to 180.3 megapascal. So it means if you look at any, any point in the circle, all these points, so if you, if you cover all these points in the Mohr circle, there is no point with shear stress higher than 180.3 megapascal and uh, I, will, I will take this opportunity also to to discuss why why do we need to get principal stresses sigma 1 sigma 2 and the maximum shear stress because don't forget principal stresses are the maximum values of direct stresses that you can have and tau max is the maximum shear stress that you can have in, in that point of the structure. So when we design something, we are always looking for the maximum values, in this case, maximum direct stress, maximum shear stress. So if we can control the maximum values, we can control any other stress uh, state in the, in the structure, right? So that's why we really need to to calculate the principal stresses and the maximum shear stresses in our analysis. Okay.